Right, we have just been invited down to Grange Land Rover in Swindon. We love Grange, where well, we love them, and we have, anyway, we are here, we are looking at the new range of a sport, apparently. Let's go and have a look. Let's see if we're welcome. One BSO. Right, automatic doors. Let's have a look. Do, 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 do. Is that it? Ch -ch -ch. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we go. The new Who Range Rover Sport. Whoa. So this is it's very clean, isn't it? First impressions, George. Up close. Different style of bonnet vents. More. What? What's Jerry's word for it? Jerry's word is modernism, isn't it? We'll have to get some Jerryisms in. Love you, Jerry. Right. So here we go. The, what? They're massive wheels, aren't they? Oh my 23 yeah, inch, <laughs> massive. Look at look at the gap you got between the calipers and the wheels oh. there. The wheel, they could have put a bigger disc the on that. for context. But look, so we haven't got any sort of plastic rims around. They're very smooth, very, very sleek, and look very understated. The um, so it sleeps along here. Let's have a look. And so we got the retractable door handles, which we're now seeing on the Evoque Two. These are on every car now. They are on every car. What do you think of that? Do you think it's Gadgety, or I wonder if it's wind resistance and noise and styling. Sleekness, I mean, we, we really saw them first on the S-Class, I think. Really, the S-Class had them yeah. first, didn't it? So let's have a look. We've still got the, we've got the floating roof line, so we've got the classic black window and the body color roof on that. And that, the way it drips, that drips down, the way it slopes down at the back is cool. It? Whoa, look at the aerials, George. That's like two monster fins on the back. And now it's, it's like, he's like a cyclops look from the rear. He's only got one eye, is that? It's a bit like me, really, isn't it? Really nice rear. Re Thank you, George. Oh, the car. Right, yeah. So there you go. And it's very slick, and it's got the light coming across. I'm surprised they haven't gone for a light bar across the across. Maybe they're resisting. Missed opportunity. I think a missed opportunity. It could be a good upgrade opportunity. Um, one thing that struck me is it's it's there's something quite it looked quite disco fivey, not with the wonky number plate, but proportionally, it's quite sort of, isn't it? Can I open it? Can I open it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. How do you open it? Right it's just on the right hand side. See, it is like a Disco 5. It's all offset, look. Where? By the camera. By the camera. Oh, there you go. <gasps> it's beeping. Go on, give it, or give it a pull, give it a pull. Oh. There we go, so whoosh. So yeah, this is an interesting bit here. I, I'm not sure about this, this sort of panel here. It's sort of flat and normally you would just have a sort of bumper and a full step, but they've chiseled it back. I don't know if it does anything. It, it looks, looks like it wants to do something here. What do you reckon that little scallop's for? I will inquire. Good question. Ah, yeah. Well, that's better than the Defender with the camera that sticks out, isn't it? And you sort of rub against it. There we go. So, yeah. Well done, George. So, there you go. The, um, yeah, that was quite tricky to find, that, because normally, you, normally, because you've got to find the button. Normally, the buttons are quite long, aren't they? And they're in the middle. Um, so, there we go. So, you've got the interest in here now. The, you've got the close button. It's very close to the... I wonder if you just press the close... See, it's almost, the two buttons are so close. Is it, is it worth having two buttons? Don't know. Anyway, I'm being picky. Right then. Very love, smooth. Love how smooth this like, panel is here. Ah, I yes. Know it's like but they've focused a lot on not much rubber. Yes, very... you're absolutely right, George. Because look, look, see here, there is no, it's, it's almost blends straight in. And look, there's no rubber here at all. It goes straight in there. Um, they've still got the B pillars here. On the Elf, the new, what is it, the, the, I think it was called the L460, the new big Range Rover. So bear in mind, this is the Range Rover Sport. This isn't the full size. It's not that one. We'll have a look at that one. Look, they've got the big one over there. So, but this shares the same platform. And we'll do another video, because I've got the parts catalog, and you can see what parts are the same. But basically, the front subframe's the same, the rear subframe's the same. So you can see the underpinnings of this are very much the same as the big, Range Rover, it looks sleek there, George. Give it a little, yeah, a little flash. Shh. Right, so let's, so there we go. Very slick, very, shh. I like the color. It's like that Nardo gray, isn't it, yeah. George? Yeah, George is saying, yeah. All right, let's have a look inside. So, whoa, I got some, got a lot of gloss black going on here. This, I'll tell you what, this is good. It's a small touch, George, but seal plates, 
It's just normally a central in a step, but where you're likely to hit is never central. So they've actually put it in the place you're most likely to sort of scratch it, which is really cool. I've not seen that before. Um, here we go. We've got paddle shift. So we've got, um, yeah, this is the new steering wheel layout. We've got a digital dash. Oh, so there's an interesting, and look, you've got, that's the bigger screen. Um, so this should still have the PIVI Pro system. Let's have a look. Does it start up? Oop, is it going to give me any? And it's not got any screen going on. No. <laughs> Pre-production. Right, so we've got the Meridian sound system. What's this little, what's this little bit of glass here, Joy? That's just a tiny little sort of glass window there, is it? Yeah, it looks to be. It's a bit odd, that, isn't it? We've, normally you have the, the plastic for the wing mirror blanks the whole triangle. So you've got that little mini glass window there. Look at that, that's quite interesting. I don't, I don't think it serves any purpose. Um, this is, you see this black, this is sort of gloss black, but has it got a tint of sort of something else to it, George? Very it, fingerprinty. It's very fingerprinty. It's got, has it got like a coppery sort of tint to it? It's almost. Right, let's have a look what else. Oh, look, this is interesting. So on the Defender, you know, they had that little bit that stuck out the door. So when you close the door, you couldn't open the bonnet. So as you were driving along, you were in no danger. Well, I don't think anyone's ever done that accidentally. But they've obviously decided, have they decided that's not a thing anymore? Close the door, George. Let's see. Could I, could I open the bonnet driving along? Oh, well, oh, it closes it more. Oh, no, I can't. Look, I can't. So it, so it is. They've... The door card comes out enough. So there you go. Phew. I don't think soft close is working. Um, do you reckon it's got soft close? Should do. Should do. We'll have a look. Right. So we've got pano roof. We've got a centre console here. They probably come with a fridge in as well. I'm going to move the seat back. Oh, have we got any? Oh, 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 that's the thing, isn't it? So that was a bit inconvenient then. I've got used to sort of having the seat buttons. I've now got a obviously it's when the doors open which is but it's still a thing isn't it it's still a thing right then so we've got some there we go we got into this is very bmw isn't it? and that sort of the quality of these are insane though yes the, you know it's very almost the, the interior voice. but look this is, we've got fingerprints on here again but yeah this cockpit design um we got the, there we go we've got all the headrest leather all trim we've got the roof console no sunglass holder um those of you with your shades well you could put, you could put them anywhere but it's interesting because they've deleted it on the new defender there's obviously a anti sunglass thing um so i was interested to see ah look at the rear so the rear view mirror is not a mirror it's that clear view system so it's actually looking at a camera that we saw earlier on the fin at the back so it's actually looking at the fin we got we got some brake pedals we got some stuff it's all looking all right um notice they haven't got loads of buttons and knobs george it's i mean you've got a lot of controls on the steering wheel which is good and these follow the same these are actually the same layout they're not the same controls as we've got on the defender and it's the same pivi pro system you've got your classic stalks um but look we've got all so obviously we should still have all our terrain modes here we've got we've got low ratio this is a proper four-wheel drive it has got the low ratio transfer box um we have got the air suspension so we can raise it up and down uh, and without the pivi screen on but we should be able to get the um terrain response Ooh, i guess we can do oh, is it, is it, oh yeah look here it comes so it's come up, although the pivy's down, you see we've still got grass, gravel, snow. I wonder if we've got a track mode, George. Sand, rock crawl, wade, configurable. Yeah, it hasn't got track mode. Now I've, I've seen, oh, engine low. We've seen that before. Right, press OK to clear. Maybe you can sport mode on the gearbox. Sorry? Sport mode on the gearbox. Maybe. Yeah, um, could be, could be if you put it in. But when we've looked in the CCF files, the secret shh files, we have seen track mode as an option. So I'll be interested to see if they put it on a sport because it is appealing to a more sportier drive sort of person. And we, we'll talk about that a bit more. Let's take a look at the rear, George. Let's have a, so. Can we sit in for some? Yeah, let's have a look at, as you're the child, George, we'll get you in. 
You're quite big as children go though, George. So have you got any recline? Can you recline the rear seats? Have we got any? I believe so. Oh yeah, we've got some controls on the door. So it, it does look it does look like there is the ability to recline the rear seats. Um, that that would appear to be the reclining. You've got the lock, unlock, electric windows, obviously. Oh, and you've got a fold-down centre console there. What's it generally like in the back? You've got a good headroom? Look at that. Oh, what's that? Whoa! That's like a Transformers robots in disguise thing, huh? We like that. Someone had fun designing that. Right then. We've got no TVs, no screens, nothing Heated like that. and ventilated. Ah! <gasps> USB ports, George. If we're talking kids, what, how many USB charging ports have we got in here? A fair few. A fair few. There's something going on down there. I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming to your assistance. Yeah. Yeah. One. They're sort of hidden down there, mine. Two. They're not ergonomic, are they? They would have been nicer in that face there. They're, they're quite, quite a way down under there. So we haven't got as many as we've got in the Defender because the Defender's got them. The Defender's got them in the back seat there as well. Look at this leather strap. I know. I was looking at those earlier. They're really. They've got this nice, because normally they're a bit of an afterthought, but these are really nice. They're framed. And have we got, a, oh, you've got the interior light in there. Oh, and you've got a little hook. Have you a little hook for hooking your jacket? All right, let's have a look how the seats fold down and whether we've got seven seats. Hold on. Do, do, do. There you go. I wonder if it's got locking petrol cap. There we go, we've got the sleep lights. Um, Trying to think. Let's have a look at. Let's have a look. See if I can indicate, George. You watch the lights. <laughs> it's sort. Yeah, yeah. We got the dynamic thing going on, and it comes across from here, which is quite a nice touch, isn't it? Oh, there we go. They've gone for the green and silver badge. They haven't bought the black and silver badge back yet. Okay. So are these real exhausts or are these fake? Let's have a look. Oh. Oh, so these are real exhausts. Wow, that's a, that's a funnel on there, isn't it? Whoa. Have a quick look underneath, George. So I think this has got the um, four-wheel steering on it. So this should have, according to the parts catalogue, the four-wheel steer. So at low speed, the front and rear wheels go in an opposite direction. So it can turn really sharply. But at high speed, they both turn the same way. So when you change lanes on the motorway, it sort of drifts across rather than turning. Apparently it's um, transformational. Right, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the rear seats. Yeah, that's that's when you go to get that. That's a bit. Right. Oh, oh should we not show that? We got a spare wheel there. Got a, so they got a space saver spare wheel. Um, oh, so we've got electric rear seats. So I think we can control the seats from here. Oh, there you go. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool, isn't it? We saw so you got the electric rear seat. Um, interesting, you haven't got a height adjuster. On the Defender, we've got that height adjuster, which is quite cool when you're moving it up and down. Oh, look, what have we got in here? Emergency triangle. Warning, yeah, there should be a warning triangle. That's neat. Ish. Right, let's have a look. So we've got power gas struts. We've got tie down points. Every Land Rover, it's a classic thing, has got tie down points so that when you're going over rough terrain, you've got somewhere to. So we've got the rear seats. Right, let's have a look. Park assist. Right, let's, let's dive. Let's talk to someone and let's find out some more details right the guys have just shown me I, it has got height adjustment look i couldn't see it it's these two bits here so that can whoosh move the car up and down Woo, look at that Shh. right i was going to do a let's do a quick storage um so how much storage has it got in it so obviously you've got the boot which is storage you haven't got much stowage under here there's not a lot of extra stowage you've got a little pocket here there's a little strappy thing here you could strap something there Right, let's have a look in the back. What storage have we got in the back? We've got door pockets in the back. We can, right, we've got a rear fold down. We've got something there. We've got nothing that pulls out here. There's some bit of carpeted something or other here, but it doesn't appear to be any storage. You've got the fold down armrest, which we saw earlier. Not really. Oh yeah, look, there's a storage. There's a sort of storage there, but obviously 
when you flip that up. Although you could, look, you've seen that. So you could put something in there, pop that down, and then do that. But still, the coolest. The coolest. That is cool, isn't it? Does it? Oh, it doesn't close though. You got to sort. Yeah, that's fine. We like that. But yeah, that actually flops down. So we got storage there. Let's jump in the front now. On our Range Rover Rail 405, we've got the umbrella pockets in the doors, which we like. We like those. They they've lost. They haven't got that. But it wasn't on the Sport. It was on the L405. But you've got quite a lot of space here. Anyway, we've got a door pocket in here. You can't get a drink holder in there. They haven't moulded a drink holder. We have got an upper glove box. Just pretend it opens. One thing we're looking at, they've still kept the old cigarette lighter there, which is, and it's a bit awkward. Um, a USB-C might have been nice. Um, right, but we'll show you where the USB-Cs are. And, the, right, and that one there, you've obviously got a lower storage. You've got a storage here. And we, we use that a lot in the Defender, don't we? That bit we've got under the screen, behind the screen. You've got, you've obviously got your armrest here. You've got a storage space here. Oh, that's quite deep. Probably be a fridge in some. This bit we can't work out. It's probably wireless charging. Probably wireless charging, but but there's a whole block in the middle I can't get to. Now, interestingly, there is no charger in this in this section here. There's no USB power outlet in this bit. So we were struggling. Where where would you plug your phone in? Those of us that have plug-in phones, and we thought, is it there? No. But then look, it's like Russian dolls. This thing. Look, you can pull that back, and there's some down in the deep. You can't see probably. But there is a USB and a USB-C down there. So, But George pointed out, well, what if you had a drink and a phone charging? Not not such a, you know, you couldn't, you wouldn't be able to sort of get your, and it doesn't look like they've left a little bit for the lead to come out. I'm being picky again. It's a great car, isn't it? It's luxury, but let's have a look. We've got the black headline. Oh, well, we, we do like a vanity. Oh, look at that with a little, little soft glow, George, just to make my skin texture look nice. I like that. What's this little hook here for? Oh, that little... Just... Hold the trim back. Right, um, st storage spaces. So we've done that, we've done that. There's nothing under... I was, I was wondering if there was like a little bucket under the seat or anything, but there doesn't seem to be any other storage spaces. So there we go, that's storage. And power outlets, so power outlets, you've got one in here, you've got a USB, a USB-C, but it's not many, is it? Um, and then you've got those ones behind the rear console. So, there we go. Ooh. Let's have a look under the bonnet. Right, let's re just review the front. George said we, we glanced, we got so excited when we came in, we didn't really. Now, if you look, what they've done is, is all the cameras and the parking sensors are now all hidden in the grills. On the old Range Rover, you used to see in the bumper, you used to see the parking sensors and it would disrupt the lines of the car. So now everything is hidden within the grills, the radar, everything is hidden in the grill spaces, which is really good. So you've got this like front splitter here, a lower grill, upper grill, and then you've got like, a, you've got three grills and this has got a very sort of rectangular design. It's it's a lot thinner, isn't it? They've, they've shrunk the grill, they've made it more sort of striped, I think, to make it look look lower right then we've got fog lights built in here so there we go we've got the ingenium engine in there we've got the obviously it's on charge because it's on display here but there that's quite a the engine's well tucked back in there isn't it it's it's tucked back a long way i wouldn't like to work on that one but there we go so we've got a we've got the this is, a, this is an interesting arrangement here. I've not seen this before, George, look. So normally you have a single release that just releases, but this is quite a complicated. You've got like a, I wonder what that's to do with. I've not seen that before, but can you zoom back, George? You can see you've got two of them. You've got like, got this pincer arrangement. There you go. Air intakes. So I always like to see where the air intakes, we covered that. So the air intakes are, so you can see the air intake here. You've got two air intakes on this one. So they go up and they're, they're shielded here. So the wading, it's going to wade up to, well, we'll have to see when it floats, but it's clearly, it might be a luxury SUV, but it's got the wading mode. We saw the wade mode on there and it's got the ability to go deep water. We'll have to check the wading spec. We'll see if we can find that out. Right, so we're just having a look at the spec sheet. So this is prices from 79,000. So this is a step up price-wide from the old Range of Sport. And we ought to talk a bit about the, 
and we'll talk a bit about what is the target market. We'll talk to some of the guys here and see who they're going to sell these to. But some other interesting data, I've not heard of this colour before, this must be a new colour, it's Borasco Grey. So there we go, so this has got a 400 bay horsepower, um, on the road standard specifications. Well, I don't know, it says from 79, but I guess that's with taxes and what have you, it's 84,000. So gosh, hold on. So then it's got fitted options. So, oh, it is metallic, George. I reckon, so it's a 900 pound paint option. I can't see the metallic, but but yeah, I will, we will believe them, won't we? Um, and it's got the 23 inch wheels. Look, they're a 2,700 pound option. It's got the Windsor leather seat, there's no cost option. Uh, the alloy spare wheel, you have to pay extra. You're paying, the, you're paying eighty thousand pounds for a car, and you've got to pay an extra two hundred and ninety. The quid. options on this car are as much as my car. That is interesting. <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> as your car costs. So we love the Jimny. Um, the black exterior pack. So this is where they've got the black grills, which looks really good with this grey, doesn't it? The grey and black is a really nice combo. Privacy glass, four seven five. The clear sight rear view mirror. I thought that was a thing. Um, it'd be interesting to see what the rear visibility is because it's quite sleek. Um, so that is an option. That's a £630 option to have a screen there. There's a lot of dollar in it. And the, um, oh gosh, look, you know what I was saying? Yeah. That, now that's interesting. I've not seen that before. I thought, I, I thought, so this is the twin speed transfer box, high, low range. I thought that when you got a Land Rover, high low ratio was like a, a thing on a on one of the big Land Rover models but no you have to pay an extra mind you it's cheap I'd I'd recommend everyone to spend 440 pounds so there you go so with all those options this car it's it sounds it sounds not too bad but 93,000 pounds that's like house money that is that's that is right so who are they gonna sell a 93,000 pound Range Rover to not me um, I could buy two Stigs well not anymore but when we bought the Stig or the Tesla so we bought the Tesla and even our dual motor Tesla was 45,000 pounds so this is more than two dual motor Teslas so um, interesting so who is gonna buy what is the target market um, and and how is it now too similar to the big Range Rover over there are they you know, because that's 120,000, you know. Have they, what, they've got the Vlar, and George was saying on the way here in the car, he's saying, well, the Vlar's very sleek, very modern, but this sport has gone a lot more Vlar-esque. It's got the Vlar door handles, it's gone sleek, it's gone, it's, it's gone less aggressive in many ways. Would you say, George? It's Massively quite, so. It's, it's, it's a lot more subtle. So, who are they gonna sell it to? Let's go and talk to the guys, see who they're gonna sell this to. What, we just spotted, there's a red one next door, so I thought we'd show you the red one. So this hasn't got the black pack. So this has got the sort of rose gold accents in there. And that's very Evoque 2-esque, isn't it? The sort of inset. And, and the new, and it's got the ingot on the new Range Rover at the back, but we haven't got that starting. Now this one is a hybrid. So this one has got batteries and it can do a short range. Um, and it's sort of got a, it's a sort of mild hybrid. I think it's got a motor, the starter motor turns or something. Now, I struggle with hybrids. It's a personal issue I have. I prefer all electric because otherwise you're carrying batteries and a motor <coughs> with you, which is kind of like a lot of extra weight. And when you're trying to get efficiency and economy, a lot of extra weight. So I'm not the biggest fan, but it is good. It is a step in the right direction. And, it, and for some people who are doing short journeys, they can do a lot of their traveling without putting fuel and burning fossil fuel which is good but we were just talking then and Land Rover still haven't come out I know Jaguar have but Land Rover still haven't come out with an all-electric vehicle and on the radio here Subaru who are a small niche car maker in my book they've come out with an all-electric SUV so Land Rover need to get into the whole all-electric thing but right so this has got um, different wheels, but this one's got the same. So this is a dynamic SE. So it's got a very similar trim level. This one's got the Pivi Pro screen working. So we can see that. And it's exactly the same as we've got in the Defender. It's got the same apps, which is quite good because if you've got a Defender and a Sport or a big Range Rover, you've got the same functions across them all. Everything else, pretty much the same on this. The spec is pretty much the same. Um, the colour's red, Ferenz red, 
Um, right, let's go and have a look around. Right, so in terms of orders, they have sold as many of these cars as they can get and they've taken quite a few orders today. So they've got a strong order book, but obviously there's limitations on the amount of cars that they can ship from the factory because of chip shortages. Right, but one little trick question I just, just asked here. I said, so on my Defender, we've got the activity key. We like the activity key, don't we, George? It's like a watch and it allows you to walk up to the car and unlock it and it's great. So I said, will you be able to get the activity key on the Range Rover Sport? And they said, well, not at the moment because of chip shortages, but yeah, it, it's compatible. You can have the, so I said, okay, how about this for a question then? So I've got my activity key and can I use the, my activity key to open my Defender as well? Because I've got it for the Defender, can I open it for the Sport? And now you'd have to have a separate watch. So I'd have to have two activity keys. So I said, okay, how would I know which watch was for which car? Because they're both the same. And he was like, that's a good question you'll have to like label it so there's when you look at that compared to the tesla and a lot of car companies now are using apple key where you can use your apple phone to unlock your car and the tesla we we can unlock it with the phone and stuff i think that's one thing that land rover need to think about is convenience with keys because at the moment you're still gonna have to carry your keys around with you and look the tesla we came down in the tesla today i mean i could do it with my phone but um, it's my wife's car, so she just gave me the, the card. So, but you've got multiple options. So, Right, we are going to wrap it up there. Thank you very much, Grange, for hosting us and inviting us to this event. Um, Range Rover Sport. Oh, one thing I did bring. I forgot, George. I forgot, I forgot. Look, I nicked off the fridge, the magnet. I'm always interested to see what materials they're using. Obviously, the bumper is plastic. I've got to be careful not to scratch the car. Oh, aluminium. So the bonnet's aluminium, which is really good. It doesn't frost and it's lightweight. Let's have a look what else. The fender, the wing, the wing is aluminium. The door is aluminium. The door is, I wonder if this rear section is steel or, no, it's all aluminium. Look, um, I'm trying to find a bit of steel now to show you. So yeah, the roof, no, no, it looks like it's all, it's, it's all aluminium. I wonder if the, the tailgate might even be plastic. I think the tailgate's plastic. So yeah, all aluminium. So they've tried to improve economy and efficiency by using modern lightweight materials, which is good. Right, that's it, we're finished.